Full Time Review is supported by and brought to you by Saltire Energy, the global market leader in specialist drilling equipment rental. And also by Craig International, a truly global company with 10 offices strategically placed around the world. The future of global procurement is right here. It was another dismal display from Aberdeen on Saturday as they went down 2-0 to Derek McInnes's Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock have now won three out of three against us this season and we are yet to score a goal against them. To put it into context, we remain in eighth position, but the teams above us are starting to creep away from us. On Wednesday, we face a huge game against 10th placed St. Johnston at Pataudry. A win for them will put them level pegging with us. Can you imagine? Hi everybody, a very warm welcome to Ali Beg ABTV. I hope you're all well. I will get to the game very shortly, but I wanted to start tonight's show by remembering our former captain, Harry Melrose, who sadly passed away over the weekend. Over a three-year period with the Dons, he played 87 games, scoring 19 goals. He captained the team in the 1967 Scottish Cup final, signed by Eddie Turnbull. May he rest in peace. And obviously we are sending our love and our deepest condolences to his family. Okay, let's get on with the game. It's not often that I'm lost for words. And I've taken the most part of today to think long and hard about what I wanted to say about our performance on Saturday. And there is absolutely no point in trying to sugarcoat it and to pull the wool over the eyes of you, the fans. It was an appalling performance. It was a sense of deja vu when we played Kilmarnock in the autumn. I didn't think that an Aberdeen team was capable of playing that badly again. And we did, if not worse. It was just a shocking Awful, awful performance. And we've been saying it now for a number of weeks and it is becoming a reality. We are sleepwalking towards a relegation battle. And a football club of our size and our stature should simply not be in this position. Today, I've asked you to leave your comments on my social media pages, which you have done again in your dozens. And you are very angry people. You are angry at the team, the players. You are angry at Neil Warnock to a degree, but you are particularly angry with the board, which I completely and utterly understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dedicate the bulk of tonight's show to you and to your comments. There are some that, unfortunately, I can't read out um, because they are very, very, very scathing. Um, but I would say 95% of them, I can certainly bring them to you. So what we'll do is we'll go through the housekeeping first of all. So let's remind ourselves of the team that Neil Warnock picked. So he just made the one change, Dante Palvara replacing Leighton Clarkson, who dropped down to the bench. The general consensus about the team news is very simple. Where is Angus MacDonald? Once again, Angus has not had 90 minutes under his belt and found himself watching the game from the bench. Again, when I saw the team lines, I was just baffled, disappointed, and I got to be honest, annoyed. Because Angus deserves a starting berth in our side. And if he doesn't start on Wednesday, then we've got to seriously start asking questions about why is he not starting? Is there a deeper problem here? Is Neil Warnock seeing something that we are completely unaware of? Because I just do not understand why he's not playing. It's, it, it's baffling me. I want to bring you the match stats as well. Let's go through those for you. So I've got two pages of stats for you. 
So possession was just about equal, but they edged it by 52%. They had 20 shots in total to our nine. But again, look at the on target. They had nine, we had just the one shot on target. But look at this, successful passes, 128, 30 behind theirs. Passes in the final third, only 36 to their 67. They enjoyed 544 touches to our 488. But touches in the opposition box, again, look at the difference, twice as many. They had 34 to our 15. 15 touches in the box overall in 90 minutes. We never looked like scoring yesterday at all. We never looked at any point during the game a threat. Um, I'm going to bring you Neil Warnock's post-match because I thought he was quite scathing of the boys yesterday. Um, some of it which I agreed with and some of it I thought he was sort of almost throwing the lads under the bus. But let's, I've picked out a couple of quotes for you. Today just emphasises what is needed at the club. We need some physicality. We need that desire. I think there will be a lot of ins and outs in the summer. I think they know that. It hasn't happened overnight, but I think it's opened a few eyes. Saying that, three or four of my type of player in that team. There are a few good pros and you've got a decent side. He also said to Rob McLean yesterday that this Aberdeen team is not his style of team, or words to that effect. And what he, and at first I thought, oh my goodness, he's really throwing the boys under the bus. But then I thought to myself, no, he's not. And I'm, I'm not trying to defend him. Um, I'm not playing a happy clapper here. I'm trying to interpret what he was trying to say. And I think what he was trying to say was that basically he's always had physical players in the teams that he's managed over the years. And in this current Aberdeen team, he's not seeing that. So I think that's what he meant by that, that line. Um, again, it was a very open and transparent post-match interview. But I just, I just felt it was a little bit defeatist. Um, we all know what he's up against. But I have to be honest, I think, I'm at this stage now where I think the players need to really take a long, hard look at themselves because they're just not performing. They really are not performing. And I don't know what that's down to. Um, are they working hard enough in training? Do they have enough belief in themselves to win football matches? Yesterday, the back four were all over the shop. The communication between the back four was non-existent. They were arguing amongst themselves all the time. And the Stefan Garterman and Richard Jensen partnership is simply not working for me. It's a bomb scare. And I don't think they have any confidence in Kelly Roos because Kelly continues to remain rooted to his line and is not commanding his 18-yard and particularly his six-yard box. So I think there is a serious lack of confidence from the back and then that obviously works its way forward. So St. Johnson on Wednesday, my God, I, I, I can't believe we've put ourselves in this position. And there's going to have to be a huge improvement all over to get the win against St. Johnston, to get us the three points and to make sure that we do not get dragged in because we are so close to getting dragged in and it is a frightening prospect. So the players need to sort themselves out, take a long, hard look at themselves. I don't want to hear any more in any more press conferences about, oh, we're going to work hard and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Just do it. Just go out and do it on the field of play. Don't tell us in press conferences. We don't care. We want the answers on the field of play. Sort yourselves out, get a grip, and start winning football matches. Otherwise, you guys are in deep, deep trouble. I'm angry. I'm really, really angry. Oh, God. Right. 
I think I've done everything that I need to do in terms of housekeeping. Just let me double check. I think it's all done. That's done. That's done. That's done. Yeah. Okay. So it's all done. Right. So we can now concentrate on you guys and your comments. So I'm going to open up X first of all and read out. Uh, there was at least half a dozen comments that came in from there. So let me start reading out some of these. Uh, where are we? Okay. Okay. So Baz72 has said, issues run deep alley. There is no cohesion at the club, no solidarity, and it shows on the pitch and on the sidelines and at boardroom level. Been a mess since Derek McInnes left and have to say, since D Dave Cormack took over, the players playing like individuals and so is the club. Can't be bothered, I said, this is a relegation battle that we're in, no doubt. Um, Bill Setter has said, Genuinely interested if Alan Burrows is still at the club. He is. Uh, not a peep for months. There's, there are reasons for that which are personal to Alan Burrows. Um, fan communication is a massive part of his job, even more so when things aren't going well. Warnock rightly notes a lack of leaders on the pitch, but we have no leaders off the pitch either. Michael Scott, a simple question. Where is this going to end? Uh, McD has said, McDonald must have the fitness of a pub league player because there's no other reason I can't think of that he's not getting played. I hope the guys at the top are putting all their time and energy into the new manager because the next one needs to be the right one. Keith Mackey said, at the end of the day, we're a complete mess on and off the pitch. Warnock was not the answer and a panic appointment. I find it mental though, the players and Warnock... Uh, I, Okay, so I didn't really want to address this tonight, but I've kind of shot myself in the foot a little bit. Um, so there was a lot of talk about the players and the manager being off for four days. So I can tell you that the players had a couple of days off. Bojan Mayowski was given a couple of extra days, but they were certainly not off for four days. In terms of the manager, he had a prior appointment, which was already in place before he joined the club. So that's why he was away for a couple of days. But they were certainly not off for four days. Um, Greg Ingram has said, attended the match, difficult to describe it as a football match. Kilmarnock are a reincarnation of Wimbledon in the 1980s. The Dons couldn't match them physically and hadn't the football ability to play around them. An awful watch. Michael Johnson says, give Steve Clark whatever he wants. A stinky malinky long legs, a season ticket non renewing performance. Uh, <laughs> James Bowie said the club has not been in such a bad state since the toaster was sold. Do you remember that story? Loving it has said players need a kick up the backside. Train more and give more in games. Okay, so that's X. Let's get onto Facebook for you. Okay, so Mark Forbes has said, can we review the rugby instead this week? I'll say it again. Recruitment this past three years has been diabolical with exception of Mioski. You can throw Ramadani in there too if you must, but I thought he was overrated. Charlotte James has said, I don't know what to say. I love this team, but something has to change. Not every manager can be wrong. There has to be some responsibility taken from the top right through to the players. What has happened that they have lost so much heart for their ability? Shinny looked broken in his interview after the game, which breaks my heart. Come on, lads. I know, uh, I know you can do better. David Scott has said, I'm optimistic generally about the team, but as every game passes, it just drains you. Best we can achieve now, I reckon, is top six, and even that is being optimistic. Simon Roy said, need to start playing Angus and Phillips for more physical presence. We miss Ruby. At least he got stuck in. Lee Warnick is open. I like that, but I think we need to make Devlin captain uh, and start Shinny on the bench. Yeah, interesting points. 
Kenny Merchant has said it's not Neil Warnock's fault and hopefully he'll be honest with our board and let them know our recruitment and type of players we, we've brought in are below par. Just let me open the other comments for you. Okay. Stephen Webster said, Top six, I'll be happy if we stay clear from the playoffs. Johnny Wilson said, Awful performance, no fight, no passion. We have a team of wage thieves. Sad day to be a Dons fan. Total rebuild required for next season with an experienced and ambitious manager who won't buy into the two-horse Scottish game. Alex Wallace. Hi, Alex. I've, been, I've given up trying to analyse what has gone wrong with our team. I've run out of expletives for team selection and errors committed by certain players. I'm down to praying for three points. Don't care who scores. Just show us there's some hope. Come on, you Reds. Get the finger out. John Robber said, Neil Warnock is a joke. Ticking a box. Play McDonald and Milne on Wednesday. They can play a pass and at least show passion for our club. No more hoofball. Derek Griffiths has said, So disappointing again from the team. No fight. No passion. Scared to take people on. At one point in the match, the ball broke to our midfield. Any one of three Aberdeen could have got to the ball, but they all stood and watched Achille, an Achille player nipped in to take it. This says it all. They're, they're not fit to wear the famous AFC jersey. I, I don't know if you watched the previous show, but the one thing I said was I wanted the lads to match them physically. And I felt if we matched them physically, that we would be okay in the game. But we didn't. We were absolutely nowhere near it. We were ready to throw in a white towel instead of taking a battle to them. They dominated throughout. And that was the scary thing for me, was that we had nobody who was willing to take that game by the scruff of the neck and really get stuck in. Like, really get stuck in. And that, going forward as Neil pointed out in his post-match interview, is a problem. Pauline Wood has said, I want to know why no one is upset by Roos. Well, to be honest, Pauline, I think we are. Um, I'm not a great person to speak to. I never wanted us to get rid of Derek McInnes. Look at him now. He'll be delighted he's away from AFC. Dunky Wright has said, Oh boy, came home from work last night and watched a rerun of that shambles. Am I living some sort of nightmare? This is now becoming a serious embarrassment. The change of manager has not improved the performance from this group of players. They need to take a long, hard look in the mirror. I am lost for words, to be honest. St. Johnston at home next. Look forward to that with hope, but dreading it at the same time. My confidence in the team has gone. Duncan McBain has said, sadly, I feel Dave Cormack is the main problem. Yes, he owns the club and wants the best for it, but it's not working. He might be a good businessman, but you don't become a football expert overnight just because you buy a club. He needs to take a back seat, not interfere and get football experts to do the running. Dave Simpson has said, I didn't even watch it. Um... He says that Neil Warnock should not be slating players to the press. It's worrying times. Raymond Drugger has said, We are a terrible, soft, lacking confidence all over the pitch. It's very worrying how good players are scared to play. Jason Wright has said, I'm gutted. Was very hopeful as always. I believe in our team. Something is not right. Just keep us up and pray for a rebuild over the summer. Get an experienced manager secured ASAP. We need to win the next game and then hopefully the players will go for it. Uh, what is it that's missing? After all the form in Europe where the signs were there of an attacking team, I want to be positive. We can do this and next season come back fighting. Gordon Lewis said it's just not working. It's not Neil Warnock's fault that we have a bad team that can't play together. Bojan is the best player that we have. We need to try and get top six at least and salvage something from the season. 
Mark Aiken has said, major overhaul needed again. Roos is shocking. Pulvara simply not good enough at our level. Gartenman went downhill rapidly. Shinny age is catching up. Baron is overrated. Average at best will be off anyway. Miofsky likely to be away, sadly. Struggle to find a creative player in the side. Overall, a mess. Lewis Sutherland has said defence was rank rotten again. So many schoolboy errors. Can't believe McDonald is not getting a start. The whole team are a soft touch. Uh, just let me scroll down. And I doubt it. we will make it into the top six. Paul Donaldson has said, I'm beyond the point of e even being angry anymore. I simply couldn't care less at the moment. We're in serious danger of ending up in the relegation playoff. It's clear that there's a number of players in our team who are not good enough to be playing first-team football in the Scottish Championship, never mind the Premiership. Whoever brought them to the club is responsible. Um, he goes on to say, I can't understand why Angus MacDonald is not playing. I'd like to see somebody from the board level come out and explain what on earth is going on at the club. I think that's the least the fans deserve. Stuart Cleary has said, embarrassing and shocking to watch. What is happening at our club that we love? Most of these players are now stealing a wage. St. Johnston at home on Wednesday will be there. We will be there, as in Stuart will be there. And three points needed to be picked up. No excuses. Gordon Ritchie has said, same old story, probably the worst we've played for a while. Top six gone now. Get points on the board and start planning for next season. A lot of you are, you know, would love to know, Gordon Bowie, for example, says, I'd love to know who the board have in mind to be our new manager. Uh, Murray Wright has said, what is left to say? If we can't beat St. Johnson on Wednesday... Uh, it doesn't seem to make any difference who the manager is. The players seem scared. There is serious problems starting from the top. It's the, you know, it's the folk that made the trip yesterday that I feel the most sorry for. You know, Kevin Turner, what a lovely 380 mile round trip yesterday. Not, he says. One of the poorest on Don's performances I can recall and I'm 40. Too easily bullied off the ball, no cohesion and players making even the simplest of passes or switches of play seemed laboured and lacking conviction. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Jenkins has said, we seem to be spiralling downwards with a squad that should be doing considerably better than it is. There must be more to it than just playing badly. Yep. Scott Garland has said, I'm almost at breaking point. Yesterday, I stood in the stand and watched possibly the worst Aberdeen team I've seen since the Steve Patterson days. Supporters were having heated arguments amongst each other's also, and that's never a good sign. I said before, and I will say again, Warnick is just up here for a jolly. Again, so many of you are really unhappy with what's going on at board level. And again, it's quite interesting, a few of you have said, we should have just stuck with Peter leaving as the interim manager until the end of the season. Yeah. Scott Wilkinson came on and said, Neil Warnock hit it on the head when he said, there's no lack of effort, but the players are scared to try things. Yeah. Okay, Stephen Lovey has said, as much as I'm raging with the performance lately, I'm happy that Neil Warnock is calling out what we've all known for the past few years. We are soft and look to take in players who can profit from later. Great in theory, but in reality, it means to don't sign the battlers, the brawlers and the players that put the foot in and win you games. Completely agree. He went on to say, massive rethink needed about signings before a new manager. 
again, so many of you are saying that Neil Warnock is not the right man for us at this moment in time. Uh, Ross Duncan said, need to try some of the young team as they will show what playing for the shirt means. McDonald and Milne should get a go at centre-back with Duhan in goals. Can't be any worse than what we've been subjected to so far. Ian Wilson is so wound up that he can't even be bothered to have a moan. Okay, how long have we done? Okay, we're just coming up to half an hour. Um, uh, Neil Ritchie said, clear out all the defenders we have, clear out all the defenders we have with the exception of Devlin and McKenzie. None of them can defend a set piece. Again, you know, the, the, the goals that we gave away yesterday, um, you know, the first one, Bojan, should have done so much better, um, but just didn't take care of his man, which was hugely frustrating. And the second goal, we just allowed them to run across our 18-yard box before you know the ball eventually broke to Matty Kennedy. But again, you know, just we're just not defending, um, and it's just it's it, oh my god, I'm just at a loss. I really am. I'm at an absolute loss. And I, I've got to be honest, this idea that so many of you have said about Angus and Jack playing as a centre-back pairing, why not? Why not give it a try? Um, because I, I, I just think Richard and Stefan are so out of sorts at the moment that I think Neil should at least consider it. I really do. And see, you know, if that if that partnership can bear any fruit for us. It really is. Oh, dear. Um, so, talking about our own set pieces. <sighs> when are we going to put a decent ball into the box? Yesterday, Conor Barron took a free kick. And from that free kick which was easily defended because it was a poor ball in. They broke up the pitch and they nearly scored from it. And I just, I was just watching on, just not quite believing what I was watching. From our own set piece, our opponents nearly scored. Either take Connor off the set pieces and put someone else on it, or... Start practicing them more at Cormac Park. Because I had deliveries from corners and free kicks. It, they come to nothing. They just continually come to nothing. And it is hugely, hugely frustrating. Okay, uh, let's just do a couple of more comments and then we'll call it a night. Again, there's a few comments about what on earth is happening to Leighton Clarkson. Um, yeah, he's ju he's just not at it, is he? Again, he's another player who's the shadow of himself from last season. God, you you guys are so angry with the board. Chris Clark, for example, we, what a mess we find ourselves in. It's been a complete disaster since we got rid of McInnes. Decline, season after season. Puts into perspective how good he really was on a fraction of the budget we have given to the previous three managers. There we go. Right, guys, that is us. We are all done. Um, thank you for leaving all your comments. Um, I know... Um, you know, I, I have to thank you for being very respectful with your comments. Um, and I understand the frustrations and the anger and I totally get it. Trust me, I'm, 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 I'm with you. I'm, I, I'm still absolutely raging, you know, and it's been, it, it's, it's, you know, 24 hours on and I'm still absolutely raging. And uh, my God, do the boys need to lift themselves and pick themselves up for Wednesday night because that's a frightening game in prospect. 
And then we've got St Mirren away on Saturday at St Mirren. And we can see how well they're doing at the moment. And there's absolutely no guarantees of getting anything from that game either. So my God, Wednesday night is massive. And how many times have we said that? A game against St Johnston, with the greatest respect to the Perthshire side, is a huge, huge game. Right, I'm done. I'm absolutely done. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, enjoy the next couple of days and I will see you on Tuesday night for the preview show ahead of the game against St. Johnston. Please take good care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.